3.0 is probably the biggest update we've ever made. It touches almost every aspect of Conan Exiles. Fans should absolutely be excited for 3.0. It is a major patch. It includes sorcery. Sword and sorcery. This is the other half of the genre that's been missing. On top of that, we've got updates to the building system. It's gonna have a battle pass, a perks and attributes revamp. And shop as well, called the Black Lotus Bazaar. Sorcery is absolutely imperative to the world of Conan. When the genre was having its name coined, it literally became half of the name, Sword and Sorcery. We've always wanted to add sorcery to the game. And we think it's a part of the game that needs to be there to experience Howard's world in full. A lot of other games are high fantasy games and they focus a lot on fireballs and things that you can see coming out of your hands. We wanted to find a way to make it feel more kind of physically grounded sinister and evil. It's more about focusing and amplifying sorceress energy. And as you select different words of power, you'll be building different spells. Sorcery is broken up into two different parts. There's rituals and spells. Rituals are more kind of the, the crafting side of it, where you perform some kind of magical or sorcerous ritual at a crafting station at your base in order to make something, build something. In your base, you'll build a sacrificial stone. You'll drag an unconscious combatant and put them on the stone. And there will be a ritual recipe in that crafting station to offer them as a sacrifice. Perform a ritual, draw their blood, and then the station will open up again and you can take the item out. Tons of different rituals. Necromancy, for instance, allows you to summon the dead or create undead mounts. A couple other rituals we have are integrated into the fast travel system that we're implementing. So we have one that's kind of a set of teleporter pads, and you'll need some blood and some brimstone to fire that pad up. Illusions basically allow you to take weapon or a piece of armor and apply a different look to it. So if you're able to craft two different pieces, and you like the look of one, but the stats of another, you can apply the look of one to the other. So it allows players to look how they want without sacrificing the, uh, the stats that they want to have with their equipment. We've also wanted to go through and address all the perks that we felt were sort of underperforming and sort of give them a facelift. Essentially, we've blown up the entire system and made a new meta. We have some great surprises, and we are really changing the way that Conan Exiles plays on all of the attributes. Corruption is a core part of sorcery, so we wanted that to also impact the attribute system. When your character is exposed to corruption, it'll corrupt their form and their, their whole physical being. With that power, you can corrupt your physical self in order to gain access to special perks. Once you've reached a certain corruption threshold, your character will be able to corrupt their strength, their vitality, or their charisma into improving themselves. These benefits won't show themselves very powerful at first, but as you devote yourself more to the void, they'll start showing up and making you more and more powerful. When we first started working on the game, we implemented the building system in a particular way. But since then, a lot more survival games have come out that have made us realize, hey, we can do a little bit better. Truthfully, I think the old building system was a little difficult to use with the gamepad. However, with this new system, it's designed to be used with the gamepad, and I think it's going to be so much easier for people. It takes all the crafting recipes, all the building items that you've unlocked, and puts them all in one menu. You can go to the section you want, find the piece you want, and it's a lot simpler. The creative mode is incredible. You get this admin panel, it unlocks all the building pieces, and you can create your perfect home or castle or fortress. A fundamental change in how you can build in the game. It'll be really, really easy, I think, for people to, to build their perfect home. Some building pieces are part of the battle pass and others are going to be in the shop. In the battle pass, we have sorcery themed building pieces, which are built to complement and supplement the existing base building sets. The main reason we're doing the Battle Pass is so that we can continue to release free features. I'm a strong believer that monetization should be more on the cosmetic side, changing the way you look necessarily and not changing the power of things. So the Battle Pass, you're going to get some really cool things. 
new armors, weapons, mounts that are all built around the sorcery theme. There are two ways to progress through the battle pass, and the first is to play the game. Every day you'll be given a series of challenges, and when you complete one of those challenges, you claim the experience from it, and then that challenge is replaced with another one. If you don't want to play to unlock everything in the battle pass, you can also purchase levels in increments of 1, 5, and 15. So for those of you who have less time, that option is there as well. So we won't have cosmetic DLCs like we did in the past with the culture packs. We will have battle passes and, and ages instead. We are going to have multiple sorcerer themed armor and clothing options. Some of them will be in game and craftable. Others will be offered as part of the battle pass or as part of the shop. We're also adding an, an item store to the game and this will allow players to have more of an a la carte option for what they want to buy. It's been a long time coming making sorcery <laughs> with each new release of Conan Exiles, we're trying to make the kind of game that we feel like our players want to play and that we want to play. So if you want to see more of this, definitely follow our Conan Exiles Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of that. Thank you all for all of your support and for playing our game and enjoying it. And I hope all of you have a great time exploring the world and finding the things to do those dark evil rituals and become the twisted sorcerer atop a tower. Greetings, oh. and greetings and salutations, friends, and thank you for joining us uh, for the uh, official talk of all things Update 3.0, Age of Sorcery. Uh, my name is Andy Bendit. I'm Nicole. Dennis. Uh, and we are here uh, live in the Durham, North Carolina studio. It actually has been quite some time. I think our last stream was like eight months ago, so I'm just like... It was a while. Yeah. It has yep. been a while. Just trying to get back into the saddle. I uh, haven't been in front of the camera in a little while, so pardon me if I'm a little... Oh, it's an exciting time, though. Um, yeah, plus, like, yeah, this is an exciting, like, this is this will be an exciting stream. This will be an exciting time. Uh, we're going to be going into a bunch of details about uh, all things with this update um, and uh, working to, of course, uh, pick up on any questions you might have in chat or I'm things sure that... A lot of them. <laughs> plenty, I'm sure there were plenty. Uh, we, all, we saw plenty over the weekend as well, and so we'll work to uh, certainly address uh, as much as we can. Uh, we're during the stream, go over a lot. we're gonna go yeah. over a lot. So like, buckle in. This might be a long stream. Uh, we were originally planning like maybe like an hour, hour and a half. Don't be surprised if we go over like two hours at this point. Um, but yeah, so today we're gonna be going over uh, everything to do with the Age of Sorcery update coming up uh, in uh, quarter three, twenty twenty two. We'll be talking about uh, sorcery and how that works. Uh, we'll be, of course, talking about the new building system, uh, the revamped attributes, uh, the battle pass, and the Black Lotus Bazaar. Uh, not necessarily in that order. And then we'll, yeah, we'll, of course, take some time to answer questions that may have come up, or may come up in chat, or things that we've seen. Um, and we'll go from there. This is a really exciting time. Uh, yeah. Thanks for joining us. Um, so, any forward from you, friend, before we jump into things? Yeah. Um... So we know there's going to be a lot of questions about this, and uh, if it looks like I'm, I'm reading off script a little bit today, I did prepare a lot of notes so I don't get anything wrong, uh, because a lot of the stuff we'll talk about today, we know for a lot of people, can be touchy. Um, so to talk about the Battle Pass and the Bazaar to begin with, as we started to get into the features that we're putting into this update, we decided uh, that we had to have, have a new monetization method for Exiles, we knew that if we made Exiles, it had to be free, or sorry, if we made Sorcery, it had to be free, and it had to be for everybody. So we didn't want to have to make a DLC and ask you to pay for a feature that should be part of the core fantasy of the game. So we decided um, we'd, create, we'd have to create an update that can both ship the Sorcery and generate revenue at the same time, and we decided to develop these features to support the future of the product as well. We do want to move Exiles into being more of a fully supported games as a service kind of product, and this helps meet that end. So if you're an Exiles player now, and probably a lot of you are, there aren't a lot of ways when it comes to DLC for you to get your hands on new content. 
we released a handful of culture packs that give you an assortment of armor and building pieces and other miscellaneous cosmetics. But for the most part, there isn't a lot of opportunity to invest more in the game that you want to play. So these new systems will let us offer more items at a faster rate and let you pick and choose the things that you actually want to get. Yeah. So whenever a new pack of stuff comes out, maybe you don't really care about the building pieces and you just like to get the armor or the weapons. And that, that'll be a choice with, with these, uh, these pathways. And there are no paywalls in our system. Nothing will prevent you from experiencing any content in the game. We'll not sell power in the shop of any kind. It'll only be novelties. And there's no need to buy anything if you don't want to. It, it's, I, I've put a lot of effort into this personally to make it as non-intrusive or non-invasive mm -hmm. as, as possible. And we'll go over more of the details of all these things as, as we get into it more Indeed. as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, something something I kind of wanted to uh, point out also is that it's actually, like, super, like, non-intrusive. Uh, the Battle Pass stuff is, like, it's just, like, in a corner of the screen, which you'll see in just a second. So let me... Yeah, we have a lot to show off. Let too. me pull this up just really quick. Um, and, like, I'll be looking uh, down see. a lot. I've got my yeah, laptop yeah. here uh, reading everybody's chat. Um, we also have um, some of the community team in chat, so they'll be there to help, you know, help with any questions as well. So let's see how this works. Okay, so here is what the battle pass will look like. You might have seen this in the trailer that we just aired. Um, Dennis, can you walk us through like kind of what we're looking for, clarify things, or if there if there are any questions that we had seen uh, previously, uh, if there's anything you want to touch on from here? Yeah, I think the first thing to talk about is just like a tiny disclaimer that all the stuff that's in the trailer and even things we're showing on stream today are still a work in progress. So we have a little disclaimer in the corner of the stream. Um, we had to, you know, make the trailer to show everything to everyone to get them excited about it. But a lot of the details that you go in and fish and check out will be a little bit off for what they would be in the end. I know a lot of things that, that people do ask about in terms of the shop itself is like, are, the, are these the prices, you know? And the prices themselves are even still a work in progress. Um, mm -hmm. I had a conversation about it just this morning briefly. Um, but yeah, looking at, at the Battle Pass, what, what we're seeing here is basically... <clears throat> Similar to what you would see in a battle pass in other games where you see you have a series of rewards, you interact with the game and you, you engage with the systems like you normally would to receive the rewards in the battle pass. As you play through and get that experience from finishing the challenges, you'll unlock battle pass levels and those levels will let you claim the rewards if you own the battle pass. If you don't own the battle pass, there will still be about 12 rewards in this pool of 60 that'll be completely free. So even if you're not paying into the battle pass to get all the rewards, there's still some little novel things you can pull out of it. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, like you can see, uh, like, so this, these are the first two like pages of the battle pass. And so you can see uh, a few examples of the items that are pretty clearly marked as as free. So you don't need to actually like have the battle pass if you want to still like level up your pass and like get those, for example. Um, and then, yeah, all this stuff is accessible from like the very top menu there, uh, and so it's just it's just an option that you can just select once yeah. you once you go to that menu. I can go into a bit about the structure of the battle pass also, sure. the way the way that we'll lay things out. So, <clears throat> whenever we decided again that you know we wanted to put a battle pass in, to me it felt very important that we try to integrate that with the world and, and the story of Exiles as much as possible. Um, there are a lot of games that have a battle pass, and it's just kind of this tacked on monetization thing that's in there and. I was like, if, if we do this and we, we make it part of the game, we should try to make it part of the world too. So with every battle pass, you'll see as you scroll through the pages, there's a uh, there will be a series of tableaus that unfold and tell a story about something that has happened or happening in one of the maps. Um, so the current one for Age of Sorcery is a series of events that is occurring in the exiled lands. And as you go through and complete the different pages of the battle pass, uh, the little text act, there's a little scroll up in the corner and some text will reveal and kind of lead you along with the story is. Um, that's the that's the stuff in the very top. Well, okay, you can't. Anyway, way, yeah, way in the way in the top left of our screen there, you can see it's a bunch of gibberish, but that will start materializing into uh, legible right. language as you as you complete more of the battle pass. Yeah, to go along with the idea of sorcery being, um, as you'll learn more about it, it's kind of a sort of archaic or like a, a otherworldly kind of language, I suppose. And as you're unlocking this this experience in the battle pass, you're gaining the knowledge to, to read the runes. And um, <clears throat> so the structure for the battle pass is going to be such that we have ages, like Age of Sorcery, and then each age will be broken down into several chapters. And those chapters will be where we hit the big uh, content updates. With each one of those chapters, we'll not only be adding new things in the shop and new rewards in the battle pass, but we will be adding new playable 
content or uh, major updates to existing content at the same time. So whenever we do an update, it's not just gonna be, oh, here's more stuff to buy. It's gonna be, okay, here's also some new stuff to do. Um, so that that's the way we'd like to follow through with that going forward. Yeah, and all those like major gameplay features like we're committing to not having, like, you know, that, that will be just added to the game as like part of a base game. That exactly. you don't have to per like you don't have to buy anything to <clears throat> yeah. like, gain access to that. Just like sorcery, right? So like there'll be a battle pass, but like, you know, anything new and exciting we do add, like that'll be available for everyone. Yeah. A big part of the reason we wanted to go down this route is because it lets people opt in and support us when they want to, or just if they see something really cool they want to have. And then that helps us actually fund further development of the game so we can make all of our other features coming out uh free for everybody and really justify continuing to support Conan mm -hmm. Exiles because it's a game we love. You know, the team that works on Exiles wants to keep working on Exiles, and we want to keep adding stuff to it. But we have to be able to justify it at the end of the day. You know, um, like Andy said, we have to keep the lights on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We um, got to keep the lights on. We, you know, the, we, this is all. You know, we have a lot of amazing, like, talented designers and artists and all sorts of people working here. Um, but at the end of the day, yeah, we got to keep the lights on. Got to, got to stay fed, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, so thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, and so next I wanted to touch into, um, so you had mentioned how, so challenges, that is the primary <clears throat> method of wa how one would uh, level up the battle pass, correct? Yeah. Cool. So we'll swap over to this. Cool. There's a lot of details for challenges as well. I know like a lot of questions have been raised about them already as well. And I have a list of some stuff that I'd like to go through just so I don't, I don't miss anything. Yeah. Um, the battle pass can be compressed. Com uh, <laughs> the battle pass can be progressed by completing challenges. Challenges give battle pass experience and levels, and as you progress through the battle pass levels, you can claim the rewards, as I mentioned before. There are 60 rewards in, in our battle pass at present, and if you don't own the battle pass, you can still earn about 12 of those rewards, like I mentioned before. Owning the battle pass lets you claim everything at no additional cost, so there is a cost to purchase the battle pass, and once you spend that, amount of money, you'll be able to claim everything for each level that you unlock. Uh, there's also a premium battle pass that addition, it, all, it, all it does on top of the normal battle pass is grant you 15 additional levels. So as soon as you buy it, you get 15 unlocks right away, no matter where you're at. Mm -hmm. The levels are linear, so they'll always be 1,000 experience to complete. There's no increased grind the further you go. Um, you can also buy additional levels with Chrome coins if you don't want to do challenges to gain the XP. And now to look at the, the menu for some of the stuff that we have, um, every 24 hours you'll get XP multipliers on each slot that's available to you. So you can continue to complete those challenges for normal XP once those multipliers are gone. So that 2x times 150, 2x times 30, etc. that you see at the top, those are the multipliers you get. And you, you get five a day, like I said. It can pull up to 20 in the back end as well. So you can miss four days of playing the game, come back, and still have 25 total multipliers uh, to be able to go through and, and do all the challenges you want and still get that bonus XP that prevent you from falling behind. You can also reroll challenges. Um, I know one of the questions someone asked was, can you pay for rerolls? But uh, I think that yeah, hold here. On. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. So this, <laughs> those are dice now. Yeah, the temporary, <laughs> the uh, the icon in the video was temporary. Yeah, was it was like, a copy over from the shop yeah, where you can purchase Chrome coins, and we've uh, we've done a lot of work on the UI since then to make things more clear where things can be bought and can't. Similarly, with the uh, remaining XP boosters thing up in the corner, I changed that text to say XP multipliers remaining because it sounds less like something that you can buy. And, and we don't really want the pe people to have the illusion that we're just trying to uh, nickel and dime people and, you know, hit you with as many, like, microtransactional yeah, dark yeah, patterns yeah. as we it's... possibly can. That's not the case. Right. We avoid yeah. them as much as we possibly can. <clears throat> yeah, so don't don't worry. I know, yeah, that was definitely something that came up. Uh, so, yeah, and then um, in addition to that, so, like, there's there's the multipliers, but then once, like, once you use up your day's multipliers, like, you can still, like infinitely complete challenges yeah if that's the thing that like you're motivated to do because it gives you a goal or something you want to do the challenges are there for you to keep going through them you just won't get that multiplier another artifact of the past is that these all say 2x on them so i know some people have already done the math to try to figure out how long it would take you to finish the battle pass <laughs> um those values the xp values haven't changed i believe uh we might have brought the bottom end up so i think 30 is no longer the minimum it might be 40 
I can clarify all this later, or you know, you can just guys can just see it when it comes out. Yeah, it's all something to change still anyway. There's yeah. that, and the multipliers are going to be 10x by default now too. So it's going to be much faster than you would have calculated based on the release mm -hmm. video, the teaser video. Um, I do also have information on how long we expect it to take uh, to complete the battle pass, but I'll get that when I get to that when I get to it in yep. my notes. Um, the battle pass can be completed purely by finishing challenges, so you'll never be asked to pay again after you buy the battle pass. If you complete the majority of the battle pass, and I think this is up to like level 57 or somewhere abouts, you'll be refunded for the cost of the battle pass throughout the progression through it. So you see in some points on the track we give you Chrome coins. Those in the end will total up to be the entire cost of the battle pass. So theoretically, if you buy one battle pass the first time and you complete all of them up to that point that you participate in, you will always get your Chrome coins back and be able to buy the next one at no additional cost. It's like you buy the battle pass once, as long as you don't spend those Chrome coins, you can keep buying each successive battle pass. Mm -hmm. And we'll be keeping an eye on the progress uh, that everyone makes in the battle pass. If we feel it's taking too long for too many people, we can tweak the XP multiplier on challenges or the XP values in the back end and speed things up for people. To and help that won't require get... like a patch or whatever either. That's right. Yeah. It'll be a change on our side that just automatically goes out to everybody. When you get new challenges, you'll get the new data and you'll be able to keep up with everybody else. Mm -hmm. Uh, we base the amount of time needed to complete the battle pass on someone being active twice a week for at least an hour per session. So most of the challenges you get will be completed when playing normally. And you'll get if you get challenges that you don't think you complete, that option to reroll is there as well. Um, I believe right now we give three rerolls per day, and one reroll changes all of the challenges. So if there's something in that list of five that, or, or anything in that list of five doesn't suit what you want to do, you have three chances a day to just completely get rid of those um, and look for something else that's more suited to what you might want to do. Um, and I think that's pretty much the majority of what I have to say about the challenges at the moment. Cool. Um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, one of the notes you left was there's a lot of really uh, cool exclusive rewards like war paints, wall sprays, placeables, building mm -hmm. pieces, emotes. Um, yeah, uh, there's a lot of awesome stuff in there. Yeah. Wait, so wall sprays are new, right? Yeah, it's essentially yeah. Um, a really quick little R&D thing we did where we were like, hey, it would be cool to be able to place decals on the wall or on the floor or, you know, just be able to decorate more. So it's kind of just a little thing you make at the at the dire, uh, at the, uh, dire station and uh, the bench, and you can just spray uh, like an image of a rhino on a wall or something like Sweet. that. Sweet. Nice. Oh, also, item illusions are a really big thing to talk about. Right? Yes, we can talk about that. Let me let me pull that up. Actually, that's under my that's under my other stuff. But let's show that off now. Um, and I, we have a lot of questions, and we'll probably answer. I mean, not all of them, but as we go through. But Hope... we may have answer questions. Yeah. Again, maybe if we have time. Yes, certainly. I think, uh, and then certainly we'll work to uh, answer questions or like. You know, as we're as we're progressing through like our, our points, hopefully we we are able to answer some questions that may have already come up. Uh, but if you see anything particularly the pertinent or being asked a ton, uh, don't be afraid to just um, like bring it up and we can there's, you know, there's, be fine with that. There's one in particular yeah. uh, that I saw a lot was um, if it's just official or if it's also for private. Yeah. So the battle pass and the shop will be on all servers of all types. They'll be on official servers, private servers, modded servers, and single player. Uh, no matter where you play, you'll be able to par participate in the, the battle pass and purchase things from the shop if you want to. Sweet. Um, what we have up right now is actually the uh, upcoming uh, weapon illusion system. Um, let's see if I can just uh, actually to set that up. Okay. So... Um, we're adding an illusion system to the game, uh, and so uh, at one of the new stations that you can build, I believe it's called the Thaumaturgy Bench uh, here, uh, you can uh, make a weapon look like a different weapon. Now there are some restrictions to that. Uh, they have to be of a like type, so like you can't make a short sword look like an axe or like a hammer or something like that. And I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, you have to be able to craft the item that you want to take the appearance of normally yeah there's a slight caveat uh you you do have to be able to craft the item that you want to use the appearance of unless you use one of the illusion right. items that we've made so one of the things that you might get for free in the shop or in the battle pass will be an illusion item that we can just take something we think looks really rad and people will like to see 
or check out and we can make a, a version of it that you can use in the thaumaturgy bench even if you don't know how to make the items so here you can see in the video it says uh you basically you, these items aren't compatible I th yeah because i'm trying to take the... you don't know how to well, I, it, it's because it's a different type of weapon. So I'm taking, okay, the, I'm taking tight. a, uh, yeah, steel. Yeah. Sh I'm taking a steel sword, short sword, and trying to make it look like the uh, Yamatai Naginata, different types of weapons. Uh, but then I swap. Uh, I, I take the appearance of the Yamatai Assassin's Blade, which is a uh, one-handed sword, uh, which yeah. then can take the appearance. For so, example. so that's the only restriction is it has to be like Andy said, the same type. You can make any any two-handed axe look like any two-handed axe. You can make any chest piece look like any chest piece. All you have to do is know how to make this bench and know how to make the items that you want to combine. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so that that also so that's a cool thing that we're going to be adding, and then also like kind of gives us extra options to like throw in as goodies yep. uh, here and there. Also, like if um, you know, really make some like really cool weapons in the future, something like that. We can just like potentially just like have the illusion items in addition to like actual crafting recipes or something like that. Yeah. Just as, as an example, but this will be a system that will launch uh, with the update. I, while we still have people, I want to uh, throw in one clarification. <laughs> Everyone's just leaving now. Well, yeah, that's fine. At some point, you know, as soon as we start answering more questions, yeah, probably yeah. we'll have less people, right? But while everyone's still here, uh, our monetization expert wanted me to chime in and say that uh, the, the amount of time we base our play sessions on being one hour is not one hour doing challenges. It's one hour of a normal play session expecting that you will naturally complete the majority of those uh, in, through normal play. That is good clarification. Thank you, friend, for, for that. Um, it's okay, we've covered a lot of the stuff with the battle pass, a lot of stuff with challenges, illusion system. Is there anything else that you think we're missing before we move on to the bazaar? The bazaar? I think it's shop time. I think it is shop time. All right, cool. Where the heck is it? Where did I put that? <clears throat> You're saving the best for last. Of course. <laughs> Naturally. OK, this is the Black Lotus Bazaar. Um, FPO stands for four placement only. It's just a it's just a placeholder. Don't worry about right. it. <laughs> work in progress. Yeah, it's all work in progress. Like that's yeah, it's not some anyway. Yeah, it it just means placeholder. Uh, so yeah, this is this is certainly uh, something that uh, another thing that we've seen plenty of comments about, and so we're hoping to be able to allay any concerns you might have about just how this works. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things to touch on is that. Uh, stuff in the shop doesn't go away forever when it's gone. It does have a timer on it. A lot of the reason we have a shop set up like this right now is because the back catalog of items that we have will not be so extremely large that it makes a lot of sense to have a lot of categories where you filter in a lot of stuff. So in order to be able to get everything cycled through and have everyone have their eyes on it, it, it's, it makes more sense for us to just be able to show a few items at a time and be able to really showcase how cool they are. Because like with a lot of these, you can see we've we've got some really cool uh, art made to show them off. Like the sandstone sandstone set one at the bottom is uh, yeah down here. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I'm just like I I absolutely love the way this looks and like I had this image in my head and I asked for it and got exactly what I wanted. But it's just basically like a little diorama where we can display all the stuff that's in the set and have mm. a building made of the pieces that are included in it. And I think it looks really cool. Um, but yeah, the bazaar uh, is its own set of stuff that rotates in and out. It's different from the battle pass. The items in it won't be battle pass items. You can just snag bundles like cosmetic uh, armor sets, placeables, building pieces, emotes, and the like. It'll rotate out based on the size of the preview in the shop. So the the big daddy preview, uh, this one lasts 30 days. The medium sized ones over here will cycle every two weeks. And the smaller ones, like these two over here, uh, rotate every 48 hours. Uh, like, like we've said before, we'll never sell power in the shop. Uh, any items like weapons or armor that you get from the battle pass or from the shop will have similar stats to previous DLC armor and weapons that you've seen before where they kind of just sit along that iron tier. And then you get an epic version that you can make as well. It's like the star crackers. metal tier or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. So... Um, yeah, that's 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 the plan. We're we're we don't plan to sell things that make anyone any stronger through the battle pass or the shop. It's all novelty. It's all cosmetic. It's mm -hmm. all for fun. 
And then uh, one thing I know that uh, came up also was uh, when we rotate items, like they're not gone, gone. Like the sale, like the sale or the item or whatever is just being rotated. Like items will come back in rotation, like as you know, discounted or whatever over time. Like it's never going to be like, oh, if you don't get this in now in forty, like one of these small ones, like you, it'll come back at some point. Yeah, it'll just like any other sale, like yeah, in the world. So. I know uh, some people ask too if because we're going to these like you know, shops in, in Battle Pass that we own if we would still have sales or discounts. But yeah, there there will be uh, sales on items in, in, in the shop. And mm -hmm. uh, going forward, you know, you, you'll see those marked off. I, th we, I think we have uh, maybe some images as well that show that discount, but we'll see. Yeah. If you don't see it now, you'll see it very soon. Yes, uh, yeah, I don't, have any, I don't have any of that loaded up here, but yeah, I, I mean, eventually y'all will see it. So again, yeah, like, if something like if something gets rotated out like it'll come back at some point so you know you won't you won't like permanently miss out on anything that's like shown here hope that helps um cool great that's a lot of nitty-gritty housekeeping stuff and a lot of exciting stuff i know it's like edge of your seat riveting experience oh, about, i guess like, uh, shop and battle pass before stuff, we move on from the shop and battle yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff there's actually more notes that i didn't work into yeah please stuff that we uh, touched on before so the battle pass we up will be updated every 90 days. It's right okay. now 13 weeks. So all the previous content will be removed and new content will be put in its place when the battle pass goes away. Um, we have to, um, sorry, the seasons that come in, sorry, not the, the ages will be in place for usually probably around two to three chapters. And each chapter is what will be updated every 90 days. Mm. So you have those, you know, those 13 weeks to get the battle pass, get through everything that's in there, and um, then we'll put another one in its place mm -hmm. and keep going forward with it. So that's kind of the update cadence you can expect for features as well. So whenever we add that new battle pass, like I mentioned before, we'll also be adding new content, new features, new things to do at the same time. Um, already touched on battle passes and challenges being available on all server types. Uh, the battle pass and the shop are intended to replace the old DLC packs going forward. So if we make new culture packs or new maps, we'd always like this to be the platform that we deliver it through. I know a lot of people had that question. I think that's kind of where the question of, you know, will I still be able to get things on sale right. came from. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I also have one question. <clears throat> yeah. Um, there is a question if they battle pass rewards are account based per server. I don't yeah, I saw a comment about that on YouTube okay. as well. It was literally my next bullet point. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, I saw a comment on YouTube saying that they hope things that you pay for will be account bound, and that will be the case. Anything you buy that will be available, or anything you buy will be available on any character you have or ever make. So uh, there's only one slight exception to this rule, and it's if we add free single use items to the shop or those free slots in the battle pass, you only get to claim those once per character. But outside of that, every other thing that you ever have will be with you forever. Right. And if you make a new character, then you would be able to get that that, that one stack or whatever of an item, for example, on that, that new character. The consumable things that you claim, you can't get those again. So okay. whenever you say you complete one of the free tiers in the battle pass and it gives you a cool like sword illusion, you claim that on that character and that's the only time you can claim that. Okay. You can't go back and start the battle pass again. You get that item once, you get to see it and it's gone after you're done using it. Okay. But everything else will always be there. Cool. And um, uh, something was in my head about it. And I, it just I, I just lose my train of thought every three seconds. It'll now, come back so to I you in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll we'll break. We'll wake up in a cold sweat and just be like, oh, "That's what I wanted to say." And just like friend, like frenetically, just like tweet. Yeah. <laughs> Rogue on the Exiles account. <laughs> Oh, I, I, right. I actually did remember it. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we added a new tab in um, what you guys know now is the Feats menu. We've renamed the Knowledge menu mm -hmm. to make it more streamlined with the rest of the language around the system. So we added a new category in the Knowledge menu that's called Ancestral Knowledge that has all of the stuff that you'll ever get from the shop and the Battle Pass all in one place. Oh, cool. So you'll see when you make a new character that you have all that stuff ready to go nice. right out of the gate. Very good. Nice and streamlined. I like it. I think that hits all my bullet points for, for all of these. Sweet, yeah. I mean, were there any oh. hot questions that we wanted to try and answer real quick before um, we get into the good stuff? Oh, yeah. How do we feel uh, about that? I mean, that? There's, there's one question that's like, uh, not. It, basically, is this, the update going to come out to PC and console at the same date? That's our plan at the moment. So as we've done most recently 
in the past we're trying to keep everything in parity um so that's what we're pushing for yeah yeah i mean like and like unforeseen things can and often do happen so like no the intent is that we'll make sure that it's all like released all at the same time but you know if something comes up that we're not like we didn't see ahead of time like you know we'll let you know of course we'll keep you updated on anything yeah. like that cool great all right so what's next what's next what's next okay what um what do we want to talk about next we magic wanna... okay Yay! we can do that <laughs> it's time it's time folks wow um so yeah the next update as you might have guessed by this point with it being titled the age of sorcery what could it mean includes sorcery <gasps> <laughs> It's Vader time. Oh, yes, it's time. As I, I just choked Twitch chat. Um, so yeah, uh, sorcery was a really important uh, like feature that we wanted to uh, work into Conan Exiles for a very long time. Um, it, was, uh, it was one of our old uh, OG promised features from back in early access, and yeah. uh, we're, we're finally able to make good on that promise. Uh, and we took uh, a lot of care to make sure that sorcery in Conan Exiles is represented uh, in the way uh, as accurate as possible to Howard's original work. So, like, um, you know, historically throughout the Conan, like, uh, fiction, uh, it, it tends to be much more like, so, like, the world itself tends to be much more of, like, a low fantasy fair. Dark. Uh, yeah, very dark. Uh, sorcery in general tends to be relatively seldom seen. Uh, and is considered ex exceptionally dangerous to both people being affected by it and perhaps the caster or user uh, if they're not experienced in their craft or if they're careless or reckless. Um, and as as with many things regarding, you know, once you get a taste of, you know, extra dimensional power when you have like the fab fabric of reality like at your fingertips, uh, power is addicting. And so you just want more. And so oftentimes sorcerers in, in the fiction are depicted as uh, like power hungry. One might say corrupt. One might say right. corrupted, <laughs> indeed. Uh, where is this thing that I had? Hold on. You're telling me there's no broomstick riding? No, there's no broomstick riding. Uh, there will not be. Uh, and so like also just keep in mind that we, uh, like sorcery and Conan Exiles, will not feature like walking artillery units. You know, you're not going to be launching where the heck? Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm looking through this thing right now and I can't. I'll talk find. about it while he does anyway, that. Anyway, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank th you. That's a really important thing with sorcery and exiles, and or in, rather in Howard's universe Thanks. is, you know, we don't want you to be replacing combat in exiles with sorcery. So I know there's also been a lot of concerns that this will turn into you know high fantasy <laughs> spell flinging duels and swords and and bows and everything will be pointless. But that goes against our are like the cloth were cut from right? yeah like everything about exiles is meant to be intimate bloody melee combat and that doesn't change even if you're a sorcerer there are things that you can do from farther away that can influence combat but at the end of the day you've got to get in there and you've got to chop stuff down mm -hmm. just like any barbarian would because that's the nature of the universe yeah and that's what we try to keep true in the sorcery system as well and so, um, yeah, sorcery is in the world also is typically depicted as sort of like an evil, dark art. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, historically in fiction as well, you know, we know certain characters, certain notable characters throughout the universe <laughs> have uh, done all sorts of fun things <laughs> with sorcery. So uh, the, the, the picture behind us also, the green picture, is, uh, is actually artwork from our uh, legacy MMO, Age of Conan featuring uh, Tothamon, and of course this is uh, Falsal Doom uh, from the uh, classic Arnold Conan movie. Uh, but that's, yeah, to kind of give an example of like the sort of like kind of mood that you can expect when it comes to, you know, mastering or, you know, taking the dive into sorcery. Um, yeah, you're, like you said, like you're not going to be throwing magic missiles or like light spells or whatever. So no truth yeah we we um one of the design kind of directions that i gave one of one of the tenets that when we started was that sorcery should not be a replacement for melee combat mm -hmm. we knew that when we made it it should be different means to similar ends so there will be different tools that you can use in the in the course of your gameplay much more nefarious and evil tools than the ones that you currently have 
but there'll be alternative ways to approach similar problems mm -hmm. and solve those problems and ways to use people as the means to that end, right? right? Yep. Uh, that's that's kind of the, the MO for sorcerers in, in Howard's universe is they don't mind taking a couple people and cutting them down if it means advancing their own power. Yep. So you can see, actually see behind us, uh, behind Nicole here actually oh, is us. No, no, no. I'm always in the way. No, no, it's fine. It's, it's, we're all in the way. But yeah, this is this is like a sacrificial altar that you can then chain someone up to and then take their blood or, or <laughs> steal their soul essence. Um, maybe later we'll have a specific DLC that has uh, our our models in as as sacrificial altars. Oh. The Argyle sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead, oh yeah, instead of like body pillows, we sell like dev sacrificial altars. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I can I can just hear my CEO like ready to teleport behind me and break <laughs> my neck right now. Door. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, let's show off some examples of some of the sorcery that you may be able to cast. Um, so this is actually also a uh, example of exactly how the um, sorcery system actually like functions in the game and how you cast uh, or invoke various sorceries. So can you walk us through some of what yeah, we're looking I can, at here? Yeah, I can give some context to this as well. So whenever you start playing the game, you'll encounter sorcery kind of organically. Uh, part of the story that is being told is that sorcerers have been uh, kind of almost, almost in a pilgrimage-style fashion sent out uh, into different camps in the world, and you'll encounter the sorcerers, and, and when you, when, if and when you take them down, you might find a, a mysterious map. And the map will lead you to somewhere in the world that will lead you to find a uh, scary old tome. And that tome contains power, the, the essence of the corrupt, corruptive power that lets you cast magical spells and perform rituals. And what you're doing whenever you read that tome is you're learning a, a language. And we call these the words of power. The words of power are used to construct, construct spells. So. Andy, if you can actually snap back to that video yeah. of casting again, whenever you're looking at this set of uh, stones that's coming up, what you're actually seeing is a representation of those words. And you put, the, you put those words and syllables together to build a phrase that casts a spell. So the words of power are at the, are there, uh, an ancient, you know, mysterious language that at, at, at the core of its being gives you the ability to perform this magic because you've kind of absorbed mm -hmm. that knowledge in, in, in learning it. Um, so once you've gone out, you learn the system to unlock the words. I'm not going to spoil it all now because what fun would that be? But you know, you figure out how to learn all the words. Right. You start to unlock more and more sorcerous power and you get more and more spells along the way. You'll see more of those options appear whenever you're casting spells or you'll learn to craft more things and you just have more tools and options available. Oh, one thing that also um, you can see in the top right corner, my character has uh, a lot of corruption. And you'll see actually corruption is, uh, is now inexorably tied to sorcery in right. the game now. Um, so each uh, various spells cause additional corruption buildup on your character, uh, up to a maximum of 50% corruption, uh, as is currently. Uh, and different different spells will increase your corruption by different amounts. Uh, you can kind of see on this example here, like, uh, obviously these values might be subject to change, but you can see here, like, 20% corruption, like, so... Uh, casting the spell, I believe. This one requires 20% corruption. Requires? I'm yeah. so sorry, I'm so sorry. So okay. there's kind of different power tiers of spells as well, and... As you go into those higher power tiers, they require more complex reagents to cast a spell. Mm -hmm. That's an important thing to know is that casting spells does require reagents because we want it to feel more ritualistic. Uh, we want it to feel s slower paced and not like an action game where you're just pushing a button on the hot bar and flinging a spell out. It should feel like a ritual. So get going to the world and collecting reagents, collecting the things you need to learn how to do the spells. All of that is part of making it feel more uh, premeditated, more mm -hmm. calculated, right? Very much so, and, yeah. And as you cast spells, they generate corruption on your character. They make you more corrupt because magic at its core is inherently evil in Howard's universe. Yep. There is no good magic. All of the magic that makes you more evil makes your corruption increase, and you can cast more powerful spells the higher your corruption is. So some of the more powerful spells that you've seen in the trailer already, like flying the bat demon for an example um, it requires a much higher level of corruption so 
if you want to be able to do that, you are going to have to risk your body and you know give your health away as part of the trade-off for being able to use this power. And then you'll see in a bit too, um, well, I mean, uh, having a ton of corruption also causes your character to have very visible, uh, you start, your character starts to suffer like very visible Protest. side effects, yes, yeah. For, yeah. for allowing that corruption within your body. Um, this is independent of sorcery as well, mm. but we added a really cool effect on the character that makes them become more gaunt and pale. Mm. And you know their the the, uh, their veins start to stand out more with like a black and blood looking yeah. kind of effect inside them, and it's really cool. And we've also added a spell on top of that because I know a lot of people play the game and they they want to do magic and they don't want to look nasty. So we also added a spell that actually lets you hide that effect as well, and you can turn that on and off. It actually I believe it lasts forever until you cancel it. Damn. Yeah, so yeah, this see, is the effect of being fully corrupted. Yeah, and then uh, this is me very conspicuously cropping the video so you don't see the dev casting yeah. your window, and then there you go. <laughs> <laughs> now you're not gross and nasty anymore. Yep. You're a in you're disguise an, sorcerer. You're a totally normal person, cool and good. Um, and someone's like, hey, that's my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's show a couple um, more things off here. So I don't here. know if you would know this, Dennis, but someone was saying, like, doesn't sorcery tie into the braces at all? Like, as in, like, something about you can't do sorcery stuff if you had a bracelet? Or is that. It like... is part of the story. Oh. Um, I guess I won't divulge too much of it myself, but I'll give you the high level. The high level is there's a new shadowy, sneaky figure in the exiled lands. He has found a way to cast magic despite the bracelets. And beyond that, I think I'll leave it up to our uh, creative lead. Uh, or our content lead Matt to give more details mm -hmm, later. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sorry, I will. I will try to talk louder. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. No, no, yeah. no, you're fine. I can. Fine. I can turn up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I shouldn't do that. Um. So I. I know we'll talk more about this probably, but someone had a question about um, regards to the impact that 3.0 will have on modding. Um, I don't know if we're going to touch on that later or. I can talk about it a little bit now. Okay. But, um, sure. One big thing is we do have a relatively large window of time prepared for modders to be able to get their mods ready. Um, I can't say exactly how long it will be because that might give away or, or, or set precedent for what we expect our launch date will be and also our test live date. Um, but we, we will go to test live. We will have a version of the dev kit that will be ready to update mods. And there, there will be ample time for people to update mods before the game goes live. On top of that, the modability of the systems involved in sorcery is high. So we wanted, we knew that when we made this, other people would either want to strip stuff out of it or add their own or you know change it, create their own spells. It's all moddable. Um, and sorcery is going to be available on SIPTA as well. Like yeah, that's right. Cool. Yeah. yeah, everything that you see in 3.0 in, in this Age of Sorcery update will be on both maps. Great. Great. What we're seeing here is one of the uh, uh, spell called Darkness, which uh, creates a localized uh, like darkness, for lack of a better term, uh, and also spawns a whole mm -hmm. bunch of these uh, spider webs all around uh, throughout the area, uh, which can cause a character to become ensnared. Uh, you can use local light sources for your character to see through the darkness, like this torch, or maybe the wisp that you saw earlier. Uh, and if you step out of the area, you can still see the area of effect and where the darkness was cast off in the distance. Uh, and as you approach it, you will simply walk back into the darkness until the effect ends, and it, it, it lasts um, like a minute or two or something something along those lines right now. Yeah, some more cool details about this spell actually are that there is local light on your character that lets you see in the darkness better than other people see in it. And if there are NPCs in the darkness area when you cast it, they'll actually start to cower in fear. And you can kind of go through and start to dismantle camps and kill things and take it apart methodically instead of just hitting one guy and aggroing everything in a half mile radius. <laughs> uh, and kind of to touch on your uh, part about uh, making sure that sorcery feels like you, it's something that you want to like premeditate and calculate uh, because of because of the kind of casting time or the process, like you definitely kind of want to do these things a bit ahead of time. And also, some spells will when you cast it. Uh, at least when, in my experience, I saw. I was I was a ways away from some mobs that uh, weren't aggroing me, and as soon as when I cast the spell, they're like you, and they just yeah. started running at me. <laughs> the one that you used was specifically to detect to like get the attention of enemies. 
That so, one, yes. Yeah, yeah, so. But I did that with invisibility, too. And I cast yeah. invisibility, and the gray ones were like, and they just um, immediately came after me because I was too okay. close to them when okay. I cast oh, it. Oh, yeah. So, so maybe that was a bug, I don't know. No, invisibility does give you, it does decrease the senses of enemies around you as well. Um, okay, so gotcha. You can get closer to them, but you can't get right in their face. If you get too close, they will still attack you. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, I was gonna. Someone was from chat was wondering if uh, spells stack at all. So if you cast darkness and then invisibility, or some spells do, some spells don't. So there are big ones that are big environmental changes. Like we have a a lightning storm that will just blast lightning bolts down at enemies below. We have that darkness spell. Uh, we have another one called Call of the Dead that raises this deathly fog out of the ground, and zombies will fight alongside you. Those big ones that have an impact on the environment are specific to one area. If someone casts a lightning storm and you cast uh, Call of the Dead underneath it, the lightning storm will go away because we can only allow one major environmental mm -hmm. spell in the area. But if you cast Darkness and you cast Invisibility, yeah, you can run into Darkness Invisible. Sweet. Um, let's see here. Let's show off this bad boy. So talking about other things that can affect the environment uh, as well, uh, there's uh, there's this fun one called the Ice Bridge, which has some really, I think, some interesting tactical uh, oh, yeah. implications. Uh, of course, I'm, I'm up here on this ridiculous height, uh, just to show an example of how one could use, like a really basic example of how one could use an Ice Bridge to yeah. cross a chasm, for example. Uh, the Ice Bridge is destructible, as far as I'm aware, Yep. Um, and so yeah, you can you can blow up an enemy one if you want. Um, yeah, you can just whack it with a weapon. If an enemy puts an ice bridge up, you can smack it and strike mm -hmm. it down. Uh, similarly with the bat demon, um, by the time you guys get it, it'll it'll be working the way it's supposed to. But right, right, right. <laughs> if you shoot someone on a bat demon with an arrow, it'll knock them off right away. Cool. Okay. And NPCs can hit people on the bat demon pretty consistently as well. Uh, I, I was testing it at the uh, little undead camp next to the. Uh, Sinkhole the other day, and nice. the archers there were just annihilating me with their life. Nice, around it. very good. Uh, and then, as far as I'm aware, we don't have any plans to wipe servers, right? No, yeah, no, I don't think so. No, everything that we put in will just be an addition on top of the game that's already there. It won't change anything about, uh, you know, your character itself at a fundamental level mm -hmm. that requires a wipe, or your base at a fundamental level. Um, when we get back into the perk and attribute revamp later, uh, one thing to talk about is like we will do an attribute wipe. So whenever you log in, it'll tell you your attributes have been reset, and you can just automatically mm -hmm. go in and set them back up. Yeah, we'll talk about the, the specifics of the perk uh, like revamp as well in uh, just a little bit. Uh, here I'm showing off uh, uh, one of the sorceries called Detect Resources, which basically gives you like a map hack that shows you uh, all sorts of uh, uncommon or like mineable resources in a pretty wide area. Um, and so you can use this like if you if you're in a particularly like mineral dense area, for example, and you don't know you want to see what like all the all the bits were, uh, you can use that to uh, see what's going on with that. Yeah, each resource has a different color mm -hmm. and a little effect that appears, so you can learn the colors, learn the silhouettes, and know what you're seeing. This fun little lad is a demonic portal. This is one of the new buildings that you can uh, create with the update. Yeah, this is one of my favorite things. I love the effect. Um, <laughs> what does it do? So it's a personalized fast travel system. Uh, you don't need to absolutely rely on the map room to get around. And for people playing on SIPTA and modded maps especially, this will be a, you know a great way to be able to actually move around the map. It acts as like a placeable, any other placeable or crafting station you would put in your in, in a base. So you'll have to maintain it. It'll have to have you know land claim and decay rules applied to it. Uh, but basically, any any number of these that you create for your clan will be able to access each other. And when you step inside the portal, some stones will appear and show you the names of the, the, the buildings as you've, as you've placed them out. And the stones actually point to those buildings in space. So if I'm at New River and I'm looking one at the volcano, the stone will be pointing north toward the volcano. And you know it'll give you an indication of which direction you're going whenever mm -hmm. you go from point A to point B. And you can link multiple of these together. Any any that your clan builds will all be linked together. Sweet. Uh, so that's just a little taste of some of the sorceries to come. Um, I do want to then move into talking a little bit about 
how corruption or so so moving into the perk <clears throat> system which we just mm -hmm. mentioned uh there will also be the ability to corrupt your perks and in, in addition to that so first we're going to show kind of give a little context of the uh, upcoming perk revamp and then also show you an example of what corrupting those perks actually looks like so first we're going to show this off here actually let me do a quick edit and then nope and then that showing off the new perk system so um as dennis said you're, lo you're gonna not lose all your but you're gonna have all your perks or all your all your attributes reset and then you'll be greeted now with this uh, updated uh, perk window. Uh, some of the names are um, out of date in this video at the time that it was taken. I believe Charisma is now called Leadership uh, as of the most recent uh, like internal build, as far as I know. Uh, and I don't know about building, but that should be... Anyway, not, again, <laughs> still in development. So um, one of the main goals of the perk revamp was to... This is actually important. What? It's actually important to talk about. The leadership? Yeah. So, yes. because there's a lot of people that pointed this out, Savage is gone. Yes. Yeah. But yes. the new names actually bring Savage back. Yeah. So, uh, Charisma is now Authority. Authority. So that okay. becomes the A where Grit is now. Grit moves down. And Craftsmanship is something that starts with an E. We just changed these names uh, a couple <laughs> days ago, so it's really hard for me to remember. Yeah. That, but, right. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe if Quaglon's watching, he can drop oh, me the expertise? E. Oh, is it expertise? I think it is. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so, so Savage is back. So everyone that was sad to see Savage gone, Savage is back. Sa okay, Savage, right. Not yeah. Savage is. Like, right, because right, we, right, right. we did cut survival gotcha. off the bottom. Right, right, right. Um, I guess there's a ton to talk about with perks and attributes yes. specifically. So is there anywhere you want to start? Gosh, I mean, I know. Or so would you I like me to start? Um, either way is fine. Uh, I mean, I I know that with the with the revamp, one of the main goals was to uh, make it more like a one to one uh, sort of experience, where like each level you get, you get one attribute point that you're gonna put in. So that makes that makes that makes things a lot easier in my eyes um, to like kind of plan your builds better or like calculate your builds better. Um, and then in addition to that, while streamlining the process. Um, you can see here that we're also now adding a ch uh, choice of perks when you level up your uh, attribute sufficiently. Um, so in, in, in Strength's example here, um, you get, you know, you see everything up, to, okay, my hand got cut off. You see everything at the very top and then you get the choice. And then, you know, when you get the third perk, you get to choose that. And then the fourth one is another choice. And you can see the, the choosing option here. Um, and that goes for, for all the attributes uh, on the list. Um, is there anything else that I'm missing here? Yeah, I mean, you, you pretty much touched on it. The whole, the whole idea here is to really shake up what's available in terms of character customization and progression and make it easier to plan for stuff. So that's why we went down to you know 60 points total because the level cap is still 60. You get one point every time you level. Now it's easier to plan out how you can build stuff. Do I want to do like, you know, max out two of them and then have two at, at 10 points each? Or do I want to split one of those 10s into two fives? And we tried to make the, the choices at the 10 and 20 level a hard choice to make. So you're really deciding between like two very you know impactful things whenever you get to those those points. And we hope that that leads to a lot of variety in builds. And you know right now when you play, there's kind of like three builds that you might use depending on which activity you're doing. And for the most part, it's pretty fixed. Um, so changing this and allowing more customization and a little more personalization, I think uh, will you know, make you feel more like you own your character and it'll, it'll let you do more of the stuff you want to do instead of just doing what's there because there's no option. Yeah, and like allowing for, uh, like really giving you the option to like, like each of those perk choices, like you said, is like very, uh, I, I want to say the word like specialized. So mm -hmm. it's like, they're two like really powerful options. Um, but you know, of course, picking one locks you out of the other one until you respec. Uh, and so, yeah, you have to like, you know, make a make a one of those hard decisions that I like to make when I'm min maxing my character, thinking I'm min maxing my character, of like which which direction I want to go. Yeah. Um, we have yeah. some questions on like how weight or encumbrance is. 
Uh, so it's actually built into that expertise perk by default. Which is craftsmanship on this screen or that's, this video, that's but yes. Yeah, so, but we added minor bonuses to all of the attributes as well. So if you invest in strength, you'll also get some more encumbrance as well too, because obviously it makes sense that someone who's more strong should be able to carry more. Right. So encumbrance will still be on that, it'll be on that bottom attribute that you see here. Uh, we increased the amount of encumbrance that you get per point, and this actually goes to towards all of the attributes like the amount of strength that you that you get at the end of spending 20 points in strength now is similar to the amount that you would have got from spending 50 points mm -hmm. in the old system ah. it's just squashed down so you gain a lot of power a lot faster it's a little more front loaded uh, but in the end you'll still reach about the same amount of power okay um and then two other really quick questions yeah, yeah. you may touch on this i don't know um will armor and weapons give attribute points that's important. Because, I was just looking oh, up like, yeah, yeah, yeah. A good call, good call. Yeah, Thank you. It, it also goes into this build system as well. So previously, uh, whenever you put on armor, it would add attributes, and then it kind of muddied the picture of what you were really spending your personal development points in because you might, you might not really realize, oh, I put on this chest and it gave me strength, and I take it off, and now I don't have one of the perks I had before. Uh, so we took the attribute points themselves off of weapons and armor, and we added the derived stats. So... You can see in this in the strength preview it says that strength adds strength weapon damage and uh you know additional carry weight whenever you get a piece of armor that would have had strength before now it'll have strength weapon damage so you get what the stat what is derived from that stat on the armor piece directly instead of getting the attribute which then gives you the stat at the end of the day you're getting the same stuff but the the picture of what your attribute points are spent doing is much more clear mm -hmm. um and then are people's attributes going to be reset upon up uh, once the update's out or i assume so, yeah but okay when you log in you'll get a pop-up it'll be like the first thing you see that your attributes have been mm -hmm. re reset and then you can just go right back into the menu and back start fishing out what you yep. want to spend them on Great. yep uh, also of note uh we are also going to be uh resetting a lot of binds i think uh, with the update yeah i believe that's yeah. it's important yeah. housekeeping yeah we have yeah because a lot of things have changed in terms of input and how you control the game uh, as far as like specifically building is one of the big ones. Uh, but along with that, we've made changes that let you kind of double bind inputs or mm -hmm. customize your bindings a lot more. So like right now, if you don't want the crouch button to make you let go when you're climbing, you can change just the stop, like the, the stop climbing button mm -hmm. and crouch and have those be separate buttons. So we decoupled everything and made a lot more customization available. But as a result, we need to set, set everybody back to the beginning so there's no confusion about uh, why is this button opening a menu and like crafting an item and making me jump all at the same time yeah. or you know, whatever wacky yeah. bindings might, uh, might occur if we didn't reset them. Yeah, so sorry in advance. But yeah, just, right. just know that you'll have to redo a lot of your binds. Uh, and just so you know, yeah, this, all this stuff, like all the, the opening your attributes, your inventory, all that, uh, it's tabbed now. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. More, no more I to open the inventory. It's, it's you know, a little more keyboard friendly, yeah, being just, that I is a keyboard button. We changed it all to tab to open. Yeah, but I mean, it's right. It's more ergonomic. It's, exactly. You don't have to yeah. reach over. Yeah. So it can take a hot second to get used to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Muscle memory, I know, is a very powerful thing. But yeah, so that all, all that stuff you see at the top there will, yeah, just be opened up with the uh, tab button now. I think the defaults, too, are that you, I think it's Shift Q and Shift E to switch between the tabs at the top. Okay, cool. So. You don't tab through the tabs once you open the menu. You have other shortcuts to go through those menus. Sweet. Thank you, thank you. And then, um, real quick, also, uh, we had mentioned that there will also be a way to corrupt your perks. Oh, sorry. With sufficient There's corruption. One yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. People are really uh, a lot of questions about uh, bow builds, like with accuracy and how that is now changed. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's an important thing. Good question. Uh, so we took all the weapons in the game and we put them in one of two categories. A weapon is now either primarily a strength weapon or an agility weapon. So if you want to be a character that is primarily, you know, an agile sneaky jerk who runs around and stabs things in the back, you don't even need to invest in strength anymore if you don't want to. You can just invest in agility and then spend the rest of your points in all the utility and survival based things and the other attributes. That being said, you can invest in strength, and if you do, you'll get about an extra 10% damage on top. Mm -hmm. But the vast majority of the damage for those agile weapons will come from agility. Bows are included as agile weapons. 
and you will get increased damage from increasing agility. There is no more, as you can see, no more accuracy attribute. It's all rolled into agility together. So many, Sorry, people, clapping. So many people are like, I'm a sneaky jerk. I'm yeah, a sneaky me jerk. too. Rogue main, by the way. Sorry, guys. I'm just a, I'm just a jerk, period. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm more of the... the... Bungle. Yeah, yeah, and, <laughs> and you can unga bunga strength out as much as you want. Hell yeah, and good. you know, be just as strong as you were before. If you also put points into agility, just like agility gets more damage from strength, strength gets more damage from agility as well. There's about an extra ten percent uh, shave there you can get, but it comes at a cost because if you spend those full twenty points into agility just to get a little more damage, you lose a lot of utility and vitality, mm -hmm. grit. Um, you know, all the other all the other attributes have. A lot to offer, you'll find. Sweet. All right, gonna talk now about a little bit of a corrupted perks. Oh yeah. So in addition to this new perk system uh, and tying into the the um, like increased kind of uh, emphasis on corruption and importance of corruption, like in in like the general gameplay of Conan Exiles, uh, once you hit a certain threshold of corruption on your character you then gain the opportunity to then corrupt your perks. Um, it's it's a little, it's cut off by the, the logo at the very top there, but you'll see, actually, hold on, let me, no, I'm not gonna move it around. <laughs> but you, you can see the little pop-ups -up, pop here, little soul remnants. Yeah, these guys, these little, little soupy green bottles. Uh, those are soul remnants. Uh, and so uh, you can use the sacrificial altar, which you saw on the, our, our intro screen, to throw someone on there and harvest their soul. Yeah. And then when you when you take their soul, that becomes a uh, consumable like reagent to then go ahead and corrupt your uh, perk of choice. And uh, I believe, at least right now in this example, uh, each perk point, or each attribute point that you want to add, corrupt, costs one soul remnant. So, um, but as you move, uh, as you corrupt your attribute, uh, you'll notice that the perks will also change into special uh, corruption only perks. Um, and so, yeah, we're just showing strength again in his example, but you'll see that uh, the first uh, tier of perk from strength transforms into something that scales with uh, corrupted strength, and then the second option then turns into, uh, you know, what no, no evil villain in the Conan world is complete without a good old kick. Good mule kick. Good old yeah. mule kick. Hell yeah. Uh, you don't keep your original perk, right? It gets overwritten by That's the That's right. You, Correct. You corrupt your body, you corrupt your, you know, your very self. And yeah. any, any, any attribute your character or your, your person would have had from being strong before, it's kind of wiped away and, and replaced with a little more twisted version of this. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and sorry. I'm, no, no. Um, please. When it comes to dancers and entertainers, mm. so... What's the deal with that? Like things that reduce corruption. Yeah, uh, so they still do what they did before. One of the caveats with corrupting yourself with the attribute system, when, when you do corrupt attributes, your character will start to gain uncleansable corruption. So this character in, in the example here, corrupting an attribute halfway would mean that 25% of their health bar is uncleansable. Mm. You can still gain more corruption beyond that point. You can still go up to 50%, but 25% of that will be removable. If you max out any one of these attributes fully corrupted, you will have a permanent 50% corruption on your character, which means you can never go above 50% health. So that's, that's the cost. That is the cost of corruption. Mm -hmm. It comes at the cost of your health, the cost of your stamina, but it gives a extreme amount of power. Um, this is kind of really like a glass cannon build when you max out your strength like this, because you know, you throw all your health away, but you start to do massive damage with that first corruption perk that Let's you deal more damage the more corruption you have mm -hmm. or the more corrupted your attribute is and that can be cleansed with uh you know the standard mains any of the standard potions it'll reset your attributes mm -hmm. you can remove the permanent corruption and and become cleansable again great but yeah if you want to recorrupt <clears throat> you know if you want to recorrupt your your attributes then you would have to to harvest more souls to be able to corrupt your thing go through that process but yeah you know if if you if you don't you know want to uh, uh, live with the consequences of your decisions. Like every, anyway. every, 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 uh, <laughs> every time you drain a soul from a, a, a thrall, it'll give you five soul essence. So it takes four lives to corrupt your body. That's that's the price of maximum corruption is four lives. Um, and then can, can you preview the corrupted perks or you can't preview them right now okay. and it's pretty much an in theme like an in universe theme kind of decision right like 
if, if you are dedicated to this dark magic, you kind of trust in it that it will give you the power that you're asking of. And I know that there will be a wiki page up. Yeah, within you know, like a minute. Within yeah. five minutes of yeah, the yeah. test live patch that has all of them. But in terms of the experience that you get to, we want to make things feel as dark and evil and, you know, like perverse as it can. Right, so. yeah. And also like uh, <laughs> capturing that element of like, uh, you know, you, you, you're peering behind the veil or beyond the veil kind of on your own and kind of experimenting and meddling with powers that you may not necessarily fully understand. And so, you know, part of that, uh, mystique. It's the mystery. Yeah, right. that, yeah exactly. that part of that mystique is like, oh, you don't know exactly what you're going to get when you corrupt your body initially. Uh, and that, that kind of philosophy sort of extends to act the, the very act of casting sorceries when you invoke those words of power is that you kind of have to see like what, like be, there's a description of like what's going on, but like it's not like, um, like there's not like an explicit like chain of things that you just select that like, you kind of like a, as you, as your repertoire uh, expands and, and you collect more, uh, options for your sorcery i'll say then you're kind of encouraged you're like oh like i just got this new page like i'm gonna time to, time to test it out and see what this, what the hell does this do yeah. and like kind of yeah start to see what happens and then hopefully not like i don't know have it backfire on you where i mean probably won't happen but that's that's no the magic idea. will backfire on yeah. you well directly yes <laughs> for now yeah sounds like a great mod though cool okay uh that covers a lot of that so that is the attribute system. Uh, next, we want to talk a little bit about the building system. And we know you guys yeah. have a ton of questions. Um, we'll we'll try to to answer some at the end if we can. Um, we also have we still have a lot more to go through too. So. Yeah, we we're yeah most we're nearing the end of our initial notes. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll a lot for a fair amount of time to be able to answer like whatever questions and concerns that you might have either you know either from before today or after watching this.